Oh, why, thank you. Hello, thanks for coming tonight, and we're taping this for those of you who couldn't be here tonight, so welcome to this meeting. Now, my name is Michael Kinnett. I'm a molecular hydration specialist, and I'm here to talk about water tonight. Now, hopefully all of you in this crowd have water. Do you have water? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is we have water in the back. I want you to try to drink three or four full glasses of water before you leave. And the reason why is because we're going to use your own body as part of the test. So we're going to do a presentation and then a demonstration. But part of the demonstration is if you will drink three or four glasses of this water tonight, you're going to see a difference in this water. Now, usually when you drink three or four glasses of water, you get that big bloated feeling that you're juggling around all the time. This water has a different molecular structure. The molecules are so small that when you drink this water, it's going to penetrate and hit your brain in the first 60 seconds. And some of you, by the glass two or three, are actually going to get a buzz. Some people say, ooh, can I have seconds? You go, yeah, you can. So that's because you're getting oxygen to your brain for the first time in a long time. So when you drink this water, when we take our break, we're going to do demonstration after the presentation. I want you to get up and slosh around and see where that water went. You're going to find out it's not there. It's been absorbed in your body. And in the first 10 minutes, your body's going to really be hydrated. And that's going to cause some wonderful reactions in your body. So tonight, we're going to talk about this company, Enagic. They're a 35-year-old company out of Japan. You haven't heard of them because when they introduced it to the United States, the only people who could understand what was going on were Japanese. So I don't speak Japanese, so I wouldn't expect that you probably do either, most of you. But this company, we're going to talk about it. And we're going to start by talking about the human body and your immune system. Your immune system is so smart, it's doing these things all the time to make you stay alive. No matter how stupid you are, we all do stupid things, yes? Your immune system goes, oh, he's doing it again. Let's pull him out of the fire. And as an example, when was the last time you cut yourself and you did not stop bleeding? Well, the answer is never, or you would have bled to death. You wouldn't be here now. You'd be gone. So your immune system doesn't take any coercion. You don't have to go, stop bleeding. None of that. It's just automatically your brain kicks in and goes, I know what to do. My immune system knows what to do. And so tonight, I want you to know some of the things that we're doing, our current lifestyle, is causing our immune system major havoc. It's messing us up pretty badly, and most of us don't know it. So we're going to talk about some of these things. But I want to start off really simply, and I want you to think about your body like a fish bowl. Kind of a strange little analogy. But if I could take your body like a sponge and squeeze you out, you'd find out that your body is 70% water. That's a lot of water in your body. So here i got a fish bowl that's got 70% full of water, and my fish swimming around are just like the blood cells swimming around in my blood. So here, everything that I do in my body, like exercising or breathing or digesting or thinking or stressing, it's something's happening in my body. And think of it like when you start your car engine, you turn the key on, the fuel comes from the back of the car, goes in the engine, pistons start to fire, all these engine boom, all this energy comes out of the, out of the fuel, and then all this power comes out of the fuel, but you wouldn't get any power out of that fuel unless you had a place for the waste to go, the explosion called an exhaust pipe. So in your car, you got an exhaust pipe taking the waste out of the back of the car. So now let's do the same thing with food. I put food in my mouth, I metabolize that food, and when it goes to my stomach, my body is breaking that food down and pulling energy out, just like the gasoline in the car. And every time it's making energy, your body is making waste, but the waste your body makes, every time it makes fuel, it's called acid waste. Your body's creating acid in order to pull the energy out of food. It's a chemical reaction. It's only natural. It's the only way your body can get energy out of food is by making acid waste. So the fact that your body makes acid is not a bad thing. It's how long it keeps the acid in your body becomes a problem. So we're going to talk about getting the waste out of your body. So tonight we're going to talk to you about taking these fish and I'm going to feed them. As soon as I feed the fish, fish eat the food and then they poop. What can they do? They, they only live in the bowl. They poop in the water, they swim around. And when I was a kid, my mom would say, Michael, go change the fish bowl. Okay, okay, mom. Of course, I wouldn't do it. I go home, I take the little fish food thing and feed them again because it's way more fun watching the fish eat the food off the top of the water. So I'd feed them again, and the fish would poop again. And if you don't change the water in a fish bowl within a day or so, what happens to your fish? They're dead. All the fish die. Now, why is that? That's because this stuff is all acid. They're little bodies that made so much acid, and they can't breathe. <gasps> they become hypoxic. There's no oxygen in there for them to breathe. All this acid, and they start to die. Well, your body's the same thing. Here's your blood. I got little cells swimming around in my blood. 
If I'm not changing the water in my body, and that's seven gallons a week, then what happens is my cells, just like the fish, they get sick. And if I continue with the same water in my body, I'm going to build up more and more acid, and then my cells die, just like the fish. So it's pretty important that you change the water. So our goal tonight is to talk about the ability for you to change your water and change your body. Now, I'm not talking about changing the amount of water you drink. You may drink from a trough every day. I don't know. But I'm talking about the kind of water you drink. You've got to change the water that goes in your body so it does something to your cells that aren't, that's not happening right now. So here's a guy you probably never heard of, Dr. Otto Warburg. Way back in 1931, this man won the Nobel Prize in Physiology. He's the guy who discovered the cause of cancer. Way back in 1931, no electron microscopes, just nothing but hard work. And even then, 1931, no one has disproven anything that he won his Nobel Prize for. Here's what he discovered. Cancer grows in oxygen-deprived acidic tissue. Every person who has cancer, breast cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer, pick a cancer, when you test the pH of those people's body, they all have an acidic pH. Now, the flip side of that coin that won a Nobel Prize was disease cannot live in an alkaline body. You can't get sick in an alkaline body. It won't do it. Can't do it. Wrong environment. So if that's true, and once again, no one's disproved him yet, then let's learn what acid and alkaline have to do with our health. Now, here's a pH chart. pH. You guys have all seen when, swimming, when lifeguards chest pH in the swimming pool, little color things. Well, what the colors mean is this chart goes from 1 to 14. And what it's measuring is pH. pH stands for potential hydrogen. So how much hydrogen is there in different things that you're putting in your body will determine if it's acid or if it's alkaline. So let's look at this. The chart starts in the middle here, really, with a 7, which means it's neutral. It's not acid or alkaline. But it means, since I'm counting how much hydrogen there is in something, I use water, which is H2O, 2 hydrogen. So that's neutral. When I go from a 7 to a 6, that's 10 times more hydrogen, or 10 times more acidic. And then once again, 6 to a 5 is 100 times more hydrogen, then 1,000, then 10,000, then 100,000 times. And when I get down here to the 1, that's all hydrogen. That's like those mad scientists with test tubes doing <laughs> acid, and they're pouring it on metal, and it's melting metal. That's hydrogen, too much hydrogen. Now, when I go from a 7 to an 8, there's less hydrogen and more oxygen. And so this now goes from... 10 times more alkaline or oxygen, and then 100, then 1,000, then 10,000, then 100,000. And when I get up in here, nothing in our earth can live in a 13 or a 14. That's too alkaline. Nothing can live down here in a 1 or 2. It's too much hydrogen. Okay? So that's the chart. And everybody who has cancer of any kind, and not just cancer, they're all right in here. Everybody has a pH in the 5, 6, or lower 7 category, and those people are the ones who are getting sick. So there's a clue. If you could pick a number, you don't want to pick five. Don't be that guy. Go be a seven or an eight, because those people are the healthy people. Now, you have to figure out why is there a crisis in America right now with our health care. And this crisis happens to be caused by acid waste causing degenerative diseases. Now, I'll talk about disease for a second. I've got two kinds of disease. If I have the flu, and I came and sat next to you for a half an hour or so, in a half an hour you wouldn't like me much, you'd be sniveling and sneezing, because I could give you my contagious flu. But if I have diabetes or cancer, I could sit next to you for years, you're not catching it. No matter how much we rubber get close or I sneeze on you, you're not going to catch my degenerative disease. But since degenerative diseases are growing and growing and growing, something must be causing this, and as a matter of fact, just look at this small subset of a list of things that we call degenerative diseases in this country, and they go like this. Who recognizes anybody that has acid reflux? Who knows somebody has that? Okay? Look at this audience. A bunch of people. Well, unfortunately, Alzheimer's, ADD, allergies, arthritis. Boy, everybody knows somebody with arthritis, ADD. Back problems, cancer, cholesterol, diabetes, eczema, gastritis, gout, fibromyalgia, high blood pressure, heart disease, lupus, memory loss, mood disorders, obesity, osteoarthritis, senile dementia, on and on and on. I can go to psoriasis. I, they just name the list. It just keeps going and going. When you get too much acid in your body, your body starts contracting these diseases, and you can't really stop it by taking pills, because if that worked, we'd all be well. There's a million pills that just don't seem to stop these things. So here, if you have these diseases, you're going to find out it's very expensive to have this. You go to the doctor, they have a pill, they have surgery, they have something you're taking. So... Besides financial 
emotionally it's draining it's sucking the energy out of your body because you're dying your body's dying while you're in it going oh man I gotta stop this what can I do well first of all let's find out what causes this America has more doctors and research and computers than anybody in the planet we're studying more things so if research was the answer we Americans would be the most healthy people on earth nobody would be sick in fact we should be able to fly by now with so much research don't you think <laughs> but we can't because here's what we all do we all do something called eating food and the food we eat happens to have a direct effect or impact on the amount of acid that we have in our body now I'm gonna make a statement here that's gonna be kinda of surprising you can be a raw foodist you can eat nothing but leaves and the grass in your backyard and your body will still make acid or you can double size everything at McDonald's and your body will still make acid so no matter what you eat your body is making acid Does that make sense now if I eat grains it's gonna make less acid than if I eat hamburger patties okay but they're both making acid so I gotta figure out how to get the acid out of my body but what happens is when I go to the store number one nobody ever admits to eating fast food I haven't yet to make anybody look at this who eats fast food here oh that's you and me that's three of us out of this whole room nobody eats fast food I don't know how you know it's just amazing to me that Taco Bell can stay in business because nobody eats there but of course at midnight when your friends are around you're looking no one knows me you're snarfing tacos you just pounding tacos in thinking no one's gonna see me eat these things same with Subway, same with, you know, McDonald's, all the stuff we're putting in our body. But when I go shopping, I'm not going to try to do that. I'm going to put stuff in my house that's going to be healthy for me, or so I think. So I'm going to go buy corn and blueberries and canned fruits and cranberries and just a normal flour, rice, noodles, macaroni, sugar, aspartame, which is sweetener, bread, eggs, peanut butter, milk, beer and wine, cake and ice cream, cheese, peas, beans, salad dressings, spaghetti, cereals, bacon, and oh, bacon. I could put bacon on anything. I could put, eat bacon and bacon, or bacon and eggs, and bacon and steak, and bacon and bacon. It's like, bacon to me is like the candy in the meat world. No matter what you put bacon on, it like goes good. So that's like a really yummy thing. And then of course there's beef and clams and fish, and lamb and lobster and lunch meat. Oysters, pork, salmon, sardines, sausage, shrimp, scallop, tuna, turkey, veal, cashews, chicken. All the stuff that we think is healthy for us is what we go buy. And of course, we're trying not to fry, we're trying to grill it, right? We're doing all the right things to make these foods. However, there's a word you have to understand tonight before you leave here. It's called homeostasis. You guys remember the story of the three, the three bears? The porridge was too hot, too cold, and what? Just right. So I had the just right porridge. Well, your blood, when it's just right, is called homeostasis. When I measure the pH of my blood, if it's not too much acid or it's not too much oxygen, it's called homeostasis. As I eat more and more food, and I build up more and more acid, if I don't start washing the acid out of my body, then I go from homeostasis into acidosis. And acidosis means now that my healthy cells have too much acid in them, they start to morph, they start to change into a bacteria. They start to get sicker and sicker, and now all of a sudden, I was healthy, and now I have acid reflux. Oh my gosh, I got arthritis. How'd that happen? Gastritis, GERD, gout, obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, eczema, cancer, the higher the acid, the worse the disease starts to grow in my body. Now, these, and I'm not telling you bacon's bad to have, I mean, I love that, or beef, but you have to have, there's protein in that food, right? Your body has to have protein to live. You can't make enzymes without protein. You have to have it in your body. And the same thing with fish, you gotta have the omega oils, you gotta have those, or your body's not gonna work. So I'm not saying you can't eat it, I'm just saying when you eat it, your body's making acid. Same thing, salmon, how bad is salmon? I mean, it's grilled, it's good, it's pink, it's yummy. Sausage, shrimp, well, okay, sausage, we have an argument there, but, you know, tuna, turkey, veal, and I don't know, cashews. Anybody here not like cashews? You can just sort of like graze on cashews. Couldn't you take the whole, just sort of tie on the trough and, oh, no. and just eat the whole can of cashews? It's like, ah, oh, these are so good. But I'm adding the acid contents going up and going out of homeostasis. Now, the things I eat are as bad as the things I drink. Now, all these sodas... In this very building, there's a big soda machine. Every gas station, every school, every church, you can go anywhere in this country and give to a little child, here, who wants a soda? Yay, yay, I do, give me a soda. All the kids, go, 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 drinking soda. And we say, well, we can't give them beer, we gotta give them soda. Okay, give them a soda, okay? So they're drinking soda. Now they got these new super sodas called energy drinks, and they have names that are like killer, like, like Monster, and Hype, and Red Bull, and Hitman, and 
all these things, so you turn into some kind of a monster drinking these things. More acid coming in our body. And of course, how do you live without beer and wine? I mean, what do you drink? What do you drink? You've got to have something, beer and wine, that's just part of our staple. But of course, I'm going to be really healthy, so I'm going to drink juice. How bad can juice be? I mean, how bad can juice be, right? It's got fruits and vegetables. Or I'm going to be even healthier. How about water? How bad is water? How many calories are in water? None. And we've all been hypnotized by the press, the media. The media. No calories is good. No calories is good. So we have no calories in water. How many calories are there in a can of Diet Coke? Zero. Zero. Hmm. They've managed to take all the evil out of soda, out of everything we eat, so we have no calories. We have diet everything, right? Diet gum and diet tea and nothing has calories anymore. So we must all be just wonderful pictures of health. That's not the picture, is it? Something's really wrong because it's not about calories. What it's about is these four minerals. Calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium. Those are called essential minerals or called electrolytes. You have to have them in your body or you will not be a healthy person very long. Now these minerals are running around inside your body, in your blood, and you have enough minerals in your body to live to be 103 to 104 years old naturally, without pain, as long as you obey one normal rule growing up, and that is 85% of the food you have to eat is going to be fruits, nuts, seeds, grains, vegetables, and roots. Who eats that way? It's the same guys that eat fast food. Nobody. So something's going on here, isn't it? Something's going on. So let's look what happens here. This is my stomach without skin on it. When you put food in your mouth, your body makes two things. They're, they're called enzymes, amylase and lipase. And they go into the food, but I'm chewing it up, and it mixes with the food. It goes in my stomach, and those two enzymes start to metabolize that food. Now, in my stomach, let's just pretend I've got McDonald's, French fries, hamburgers, crackers, cheese, uh, a soda, and um, broccoli. I actually had a vegetable. Okay. So I've got these things in my stomach, and your stomach goes, oh, look at this mess. So your body, to pull it out, to make you well, says, let's take hydrochloric acid and pump hydrochloric acid inside your stomach, and hydrochloric acid on the pH chart happens to be 1.5. It's so acidic on that 1 to 14 chart, it's just like nuclear fuel coming into your stomach. And it's got to be because you've got all these different foods from real mushy to real solid, so it's working and melting and melting and turning it into a liquid, and when this hydrochloric acid mess mixes with the food, this stuff starts coming down and hits this little spot called the duodenum or the duodenum, depending upon where you went to med school. And what happens there, it sends a signal to your stomach and says, stop the hydrochloric acid. Okay. And it goes to your pancreas, which is right behind your stomach, and it tells your pancreas, this second, go out to the blood and pull out these four minerals, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium, and mix it into a brew, and it's called bicarbonate HCO3. How many people have heard of bicarbonate before? Okay? Bicarbonate, like Tums and alka those are bicarbonates. Well, your stomach's been making that for a long time. And so it makes this brew out of all these minerals. And what it does, that's also called pancreatic juice. And so it then squirts pancreatic juice into this mixture. And pancreatic juice, bicarbonates, has a pH up here at 8.8, .8, really high in the pH chart. Lots of alkaline, lots of oxygen. Okay? So now it's like the mineral guys are spraying this pancreatic juice all over the food, just cooling it down. So this red hot acid goes into like a neutral state, into the fours and fives and sixes range of pH. But your body still can't use the food yet. Before it goes into your small intestine, your small intestine has to have a pH of 8.1 or higher. So since the food's not there yet, your body goes to your gallbladder, takes some bile, it goes and squirts it right into your small intestine and it raises the pH up to over 8.1 and now the food, which is a liquid, goes into your small intestine and you, inside your small intestine you have little things, finger things called villi so as the food goes through, it's sucking all the vitamin B and C and A and D and protein out and it saves that stuff so when you go to sleep at night when you go to sleep, your body takes all the nutrients out and starts patching your body back up from you beating it up all day okay? so when you sleep, your body repairs its body but Three times a day, or four times a day, depending on how often you eat, your body's going to make hydrochloric acid, and it's going to go out and make bicarbonate HCO3. It's sucking the minerals out of your body all day long, and the more acid you put in your body, the more minerals it takes to neutralize it. All day, all day, all day. Now that's a fine thing, but there's a problem. And here's the problem. 
Dr. Linda Franchetta, University of California, San Francisco, has done studies on millions of people just like us who eat all the same foods we do. And she found out your body's ability to go to the blood and find calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and make bicarbonate HCO3 falls like a rock when you hit the age of 42 to 45. Your body's ability to neutralize all this acid suddenly drops dramatically and you start getting your body into an extreme state of acidosis and now you start getting things you never thought you were going to get because you've always been a healthy person. I'm always the healthy guy. They're the sick guy. I'm the healthy guy, but not now. So doctors have written books about this. I've got book after book after book that nobody reads. And you can see why. Here's Dr. Theodore Brudy's book, Alkalize or Die. That sounds like a fun book, doesn't it? Alkalize. Let's warm up at night and read Alkalize or Die. Ooh. Well, the problem is no one knows what alkalize means. They just know what die means. So I'm not going to read that book. And then the next book we got by Bob McCauley, The Miraculous Properties of Ionized Water. Well, that's great. What's ionized water? No one's even heard of it. How can it be miraculous if I don't even know what it is? Reverse Aging, Dr. Sang Wang. Brilliant book. But we all disbelieve the reverse aging thing with the Fountain of Youth stories and the Ponce de Leon and all that. We think, yeah, you can't do it. Wrong though. This book is brilliant, reverse aging, but no one thinks it's possible. The enzyme factor, Dr. Hiromi Shinya. The acid alkaline balance diet, the secrets of an alkaline body. On and on and on. All these books, nobody reads. There's one more guy, Dr. Robert Young out of San Diego. He's written a lot of books like the pH miracle for weight loss and the pH miracle for diabetes. Sick and tired. He says, without enough water, your body goes into fat storage. Hmm. Does that mean any water? No, 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 no. Drinking alkaline water is the single most healthy thing you can do. And no one's even heard of it, let alone the single most healthy thing you can do. It's an amazing thing. Now, if you had 50 pounds to lose, let's say you were 50 or 100 pounds overweight. You, at this point in your life, you have tried every diet known to man, right? You've tried the grapefruit diet, you've done the G.D. Craig diet, you've done the walk to Africa without food diet, you've done everything you can think of, you've tried everything. And especially, who remembers the Atkins diet? Was that great? All the stuff you ever wanted to eat, butter and lobster and steak in the same meal? My wife and I go down to Newport Beach and almost go into a coma eating all this food. The waiters would say, you guys on a diet? Uh -huh. We had butter like dripping off our face. Uh -huh. We loved that diet. It was great. And then Atkins died. It's like, ah, oh, you wrecked that diet. You can't go die, you know. Don't do that. Jeez, that's no good. So here, if you have 50 pounds to lose and you've tried everything and somebody came up to you with a straight face and said, hey, if you'll just change the kind of water you drink, you can lose that 50 pounds. You would think they were a nut job, wouldn't you? That's not true. I've tried everything. I've, I've starved myself. I've eaten grapefruit till I blow up. But if you did, if you drank different water and lost 50 pounds, would that be a miracle to you? It would, wouldn't it? And you couldn't shut up. You'd tell everybody, look, I'm a skinny person. You'd walk around telling everybody, look, 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 I lost 50 pounds. How about diabetes? Diabetes is incurable. Ask any doctor. We're going to show you tonight. That's not true. If someone said, just change your water, change your water, and you can get off your insulin, would you think they're crazy? You would. Because it's so against conventional wisdom but what I'm here to tell you is what we're talking about tonight is disruptive technology. We live in a society of creative destruction. When something new comes along, it destroys the old paradigm. But the guys in the old camp don't like it. So if you go to your doctor tomorrow and say, hey, what about this alpha water? They go, ha, insane. Those are snake salesmen. That's what they're doing. But I'm going to prove otherwise tonight. I'll prove to you beyond any doubt that everything I'm saying to you will affect your life in such a way that you cannot afford to be without this. There's a saying, I will live my life in such a way that I will prove by my life my critics are liars. Who likes that? Because your life is the proof of what's going on. Now, what's the solution? If I'm sick, I don't want to get sick. The solution is drinking kangen water. Kangen. That's a Japanese word that means return to origin. They're going to get your body back to the way it was when you were born. Because before you were born, you spent nine months floating around inside your mother's amniotic fluid, little kid, swimming, all alkaline water for nine months, all alkaline. You come out, you little alkaline child, perfect nails, perfect skin, your pH baby, hi, I'm perfect. Right? Little kids smell good most of the time. The little bodies are all perfect, you know, just right. And then our parents spend the next year teaching us how to eat acid. 
And they start with something good, like they have those Gerber baby food, the carrots, and the kids go, ah. Oh, how about this? How about a cookie? Oh, no, 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 no. So we start teaching the kids, eat acid. Here, eat this, eat this. How about this? And pretty soon, kids start to pork up. Who is porking up nicely? The kids, you know? Can I hold your child? Whoa, 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 whoa. this kid's a big one. And we so believe in acid, we actually have National Acid Day. It's called Halloween. All the little kids go out and trick or treat with, you know, like pillow bags full of candy. If someone gives them an apple, they go, Apple, what are you, not? I want Snickers. Give me acid, give me acid, give me acid. Because we learn how to eat that because we love. But drinking cognac water, listen to this, you got to pay attention, this is really important. It's the most affordable solution, it's the most practical solution to curing, solving, healing your body if you're sick in degenerative disease. Or preventing it. Why wait till you're sick to solve the problem? Why not prevent it? Does that make sense? Now, now, why does this water work? Because it removes the acid waste in your blood cells by just changing your water. And I'll show you that in another picture in a second. Also, it detoxifies your body. Inside your colon, your colon is the little, it's the, the little keeping trap of all the poison in your body. All the stuff that's poisonous is living in your colon. If you don't get rid of that, you're not going to get rid of being sick. Because your sickness, your disease has to feed on something. And that's, that's the lunch wagon right there inside your colon. And the third thing it's going to do is it's going to superhydrate your tissue. Now, your bone marrow is the manufacturing plant for your entire immune system. It makes T cells, B cells, stem cells, red cells, white cells all come out of your bones. And if you are 1% dehydrated, which is so easy to be, you're going to have a 5% decrease in your cognitive functions. You're walking around going, what? Ever walk in? You're like standing in the front of the refrigerator door going, what was I doing here? Right? Or you're standing by the bathroom going, I'm hungry. <laughs> right? You're, You're not, not quite there. You're dehydrated. Your brain is dehydrated. And by the way, your brain is the first place to get water when you consume water, hydrate your body. So when you have a migraine headache, you're in serious trouble because the first place to lose water is your skin. You get dry skin. Second place is your organs that give it up. Third place is your brain. When your brain is dehydrated, you're getting a severe migraine headache. And we were down in Scottsdale a couple weeks ago doing a presentation. We had this new doctor clinic down there, which is now carrying our water. And the main doctor had a severe migraine headache, and he came and says, oh, man, they had a brand new wellness opening, all these new clients. He says, I got a migraine. I said, man, come here. Drink this water, 15 minutes, go in the room. Of course, I gave him a shot of 11.5. And in 15 minutes, this man's back online. He came back online. He was hydrated immediately. You've got to stay hydrated. Now, if, it wasn't, if I discovered the cure of cancer, for everyone on the earth, and it costs $15 million per pill, but it guaranteed to cure cancer, how many people could afford that cure? Not everybody, would they? Some rich people could get it, but if something's going to be a solution, it has to be affordable. It has to be affordable. So this is the most affordable solution for everybody in the room and everybody you know is drinking this water, and I'm going to show you why. Now, people say, how do you know this, Michael? How is this true? This water has been served in the top Japanese hospital since 1974. For 35 years, this is the water. Now, you know, when you check into a hospital, you put those ugly robes on and your butt's hanging out. You know what I'm talking about? If you go to a doctor in Japan and say, Doctor, with your little ugly robe on, say, I'm pretty thirsty. Can I have a Coke? The doctor goes, Coke, no Coke. He goes, geez, easy, man. How about milk? No, no. How about tomato juice? No tomato juice. How about water? He goes, Kangen. You're drinking kangen water. In Japan, it's the opposite way. Now, look at this. For thousands of years, the Japanese have been laughed at by Western medicine called allopathic medicine. They've been doing things like yin and yang, and herbs, and spices, and meditation, and acupuncture, and acupressure, and all the stuff our doctors go, that's not medicine, that's voodoo. If you try to get your chiropractor to cover your insurance for, I mean, your insurance company to cover your chiropractic five years ago, they would say, no. That's not medicine. Those are bone crackers. Those aren't doctors. Those are, that's a different thing. We don't think they're doctors. But everybody went, fine, I don't care. I'm paying for it myself. We went around our doctor. Everybody has chiropractors now. And guess what? We're all walking around touching our toes and going, hey, chiropractor's good. And guess what? Your insurance company is what? They're paying for a chiropractor, aren't they? Same thing with acupuncture, isn't it? Used to be they laughed at acupuncture, but not anymore. Because if you've gone there, you find out they have a science behind what's going on. They know what's going on. Yep, they can put something here in your, your knees better. 
I don't, I don't know how they do it. it. <laughs> but they know all these little meridians in your body and touch this and that starts to fix. So what I'm saying is, this 